From the theater at Madison Square Garden, it's HBO's Boxing After Dark. Tonight, two fights in the featherweight division, featuring some of the best and most exciting young talents in the sport. We'll get things started with Cuban sensation, Yoriakis Gamboa, putting his undefeated record on the line against hard-nosed veteran Roger M. Tagua of Tanzania. Then in our main event, slick boxing veteran Steven Luevano risks his 126-pound title belt against undefeated Puerto Rican star Juan Manuel Lopez. Hello again, everyone. So glad you could join us for HBO's Boxing After Dark. I'm Bob Pop. We've got a great two action fight set up for you here tonight. You don't want to miss it. Talented young fighters, both in the 126-pound weight class in which both bouts will be contested. A very intriguing weight class. To tell us more about it, we welcome in HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. And, Mac, we're going to see two fights tonight in the featherweight division that could be really explosive in a division that's loaded with talent. Several years ago, we saw a golden age of featherweights. We may not be there there right now but there are some interesting fighters here are the belt holders Chris John the longest reigning most legitimate of the belt holders but was almost knocked out it seemed late in this fight against Rocky Juarez most in his most recent fight Stephen will know who you're gonna see tonight belt holder a real good fighter the question is is he already an old 28 Cristobal Cruz has had an up-and-down career a winding kind of career at the moment it's up Rojas, a streaking Dominican fighter who seemed to be on a roll but has been on the shelf as of late. And here are some of the real potential stars of the division who you're going to see tonight. Gamboa, um, among the very most talented uh, athletes in boxing. Juan Manuel Lopez, a real blue chipper. Caballero actually fights at 122 pounds, but he's almost six feet tall and he's been calling out Lopez. Well, Max, you mentioned your York Gamboa, who we'll see tonight, 16-0 with 14 knockouts, a former Olympic champion from Cuba. His road to the United States and his road to stardom has not been a road paved with gold. Cuba, the communist island nation just... Yuriokis Gamboa, born in Guantanamo, is the latest graduate of its storied amateur boxing program. And like so many of his countrymen, he was introduced to the sport by his father. Gamboa's boxing journey began in Cuba, at a place like this. They call it La Finca. In four games in Athens, but traveling internationally allowed Gamboa and his teammates to see the world in a way they never had before. And on an island where poverty reigns, an Olympic gold medal has more practical uses. By 2006, Gamboa had had enough and secretly met with Miami attorney Tony Gonzalez. From July 06 till December 06, it was you know, I'd say two, three times a week that we spoke for the next five months. He spoke in code a lot over the phone. They're very paranoid that they're tapping in on their phone conversations, stuff like that. I would imagine it's very traumatic, you know, and they're always over looking over their shoulders. In December of that year, Gamboa and two fellow Cuban boxing gold medalists made their move, defecting from a boxing tournament in Venezuela to neighboring Colombia. Three months later, they were in the United States. <laughs> Madre, hijo, padre, etc. Sabes que po podía, finalmente tú no sabías si esto podía ser fructífero o podía ser una lamentación para el resto de tu vida. 
So far, Gamboa's gamble is paying off just fine. After turning pro and living in Germany for a year, Gamboa returned to Miami where his career has taken off. He's undefeated in 16 fights with 14 knockouts and is considered one of the most promising and exciting young fighters in the sport. Personally, he's been able to help his daughter, brother, and father escape the oppressive poverty in Cuba, having relocated them to his new home in Miami. Though the scars left behind by a lifetime of oppression in Cuba run deep, Gamboa has just one wish, to someday make the 90-mile journey home again. A lot of people don't understand is that they never know if they're going to ever go back home. He's considered a traitor to the country. It's a big, big burden. Caminar con mi gente, eso es lo más, lo que más yo quiero ahora. Para mí, las 90 millas se me convierten en 100 mil millas. Well, from the mecca of amateur boxing, Cuba, to the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden in New York, we welcome an HBO boxing analyst, Lennox Lewis. Lennox, I want you to talk a little bit about the transition that Gamboa's had to make. He's 16-0 and as a pro. You were a prized amateur as well, like Gamboa was. Gamboa has made the transition. How difficult is it to go from the amateur style to the pro style? And what do you think of Gamboa's progress so far? Well, it's very difficult in one sense. You have to empty your cup. Everything that you know as an amateur, you basically have to put that aside and take up a new cup, and that's professionals. One thing about the professionals is you can take your time, there's a lot more time, and you settle down behind your punches. Settling down behind your punches means placing your punches. There's no rush to put it all in three rounds. But I think his transition's done quite well. He's doing quite well. Yeah, 16-0 with 14 knockouts on his resume. Well, on the other side of the coin, Max Kellerman, we get a look at Rogers Mtagwa from Tanzania. Now, when you fight this guy, it's like undergoing a root canal. I mean, he's going to make you work and work and work. Not for the uh, audience, thankfully, though. It's a lot of fun to watch him fight. Tell me if you've heard this one before. Philadelphia club fighter with double-digit losses gets a shot at the title and then almost wins by knockout in the last round only to lose a decision. Of course, this is real life, and Mtagwa, the real-life Rocky, is actually from Tanzania and fights at featherweight, isn't a heavyweight, doesn't get the same kind of fanfare, and doesn't get a rematch with a champ. Instead, he gets a fight here tonight with Yuri Orcas Gamboa, maybe an even more scintillating fighter than Juan Manuel Lopez. Once again, M. Tagua, who's used to being in these kind of fights of the year type fights, has his work cut out for him. Well, Max, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for the first bout of the evening between Gamboa and M. Tagua. M. Tagua, 30 years of age, the height the same, the arm length, well, you got a one inch advantage for Amtagua. Here's the interesting aspect, Gamboa at 126 pounds. This fight is contracted for 126 pounds. Amtagua weighed in at just 122 and a half, and he told us during the fighter meetings, I eat what I eat when I want to eat. He obviously didn't eat a lot in order to get up to 126 pounds. That's not against the rules. As we welcome in Harold Letterman, our unofficial ringside scorer. The Yuri Arcus Gamboa, Roger Mtagwa fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Bob, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Bob! And there is Roger Mtagwa fighting out of Philadelphia. Max, really interesting story. Came to the United States in 2000. Most people know him as Rogers Mtagwa. Someone just threw an S on his name and it stuck. In fact, his birth date is actually different than what it is. On his passport, it's October 9th. His real birth date is in March. He's 30 years of age, but the guy is just all about boxing. Every time I've seen him, I've thought, wow, if he were considered a world-class fighter, he, this fight that he's in right now would be considered a fight of the year, but he's really just a, a notch below that. Meanwhile, against Lopez, he proved he can be a world-class fighter, and many people did think that his fight last year against Lopez was the fight of the year. All he does is train and work out, and he's really kind of dedicated himself to his craft. He came to the United States without a penny in his pocket because he said the United States is the mecca of boxing, and he went to Philadelphia because of the great history there, and here he is 
fighting at the theater of Madison Square Garden tonight in a defining fight after coming through in grand fashion in his last fight. That last fight was right here in the theater at Madison Square Garden against Juan Manuel Lopez. And Mtagua was really a guy in this fight that most people dismissed. Mike was at 122 pounds, you know, here's just a guy that's gonna come into the ring and he's gonna be an opponent. But as it turned out, it was not the case that night. As we take a look at some of the highlights of that fight, and early on, well, Mtagua was kind of playing the part. Like many pressure fighters, he has a tendency to start slow. It takes him a while to start smoking. Uh, and so early on, it looked like a mismatch, as people thought it would be. Lopez, with the shorter, crisper, more accurate shots, was dominating the boxing match. But as the fight went on, and it turned increasingly to a contest of wills, and Pagua was able to impose his largely, especially here in the 11th, he hurt Lopez badly, and throughout the 12th, looked like he was on the verge of a knockout win. And it's just the sheer will of Lopez able to stay up and deal with all that pressure. And at the end of the day, M. Tagua won a lot of votes for the boxing public as a viable guy. And that's why we're here tonight. Let's see how Gamboa does against the guy that Lopez just struggled against. New York is Gamboa, 28 years of age, 16-0, 14 knockouts. Lennox, when you watch a guy like Gamboa fight, he's got the hand speed, He's got power, he's got all the tools that are necessary. It'll be interesting to see how he deals with what Antagua brings to the table, and that's a ruggedness trying to extend the fight late. That's the big question mark, isn't it? Well, it's a question mark because you box all kinds of different fighters, and this fighter uh, will definitely test your heart and test your soul. But, you know, he's tailor-made for... Um, Gamboa, yeah. Yeah, Gamboa, and Gamboa's gonna use his speed and try and move around him. And I've always said you can't hit what you can't catch. So, uh, Agua has a, a great work in front of him. Well, Gamboa's got all the hand speed, he's got all the movement in and out. The question is, Will Amtagua be able to get Gamboa to fight the fight that he needs, or will Gamboa be able to dictate the terms? We're going to find out over the span of 12 rounds. Let's send it up to the ring for tonight's ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the theater, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA, where tonight, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated is proud to present HBO Boxing After Dark, a doubleheader evening of World Championship Boxing, sponsored by Tecate Cerveza Con Character, and the event Pacquiao versus Clotty, live on HBO Pay-Per-View from Cowboys Stadium, Dallas, Texas, on March 13th, and the Clinton Bush Haiti Fund, starting tonight for every ticket sold to every top-ranked boxing event. In the entire year of 2010, a dollar donation goes to the fund. Do your part. Go to ClintonBushHaitiFund.org. These ballots are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. This next one presented in association with Arena Box and Pelts Boxing. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Tom Schreck, Nelson Vasquez and Steve Weisfeld, and inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Steve Smoker. And now, from Madison Square Garden, New York City, let's get this party started! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a white with black official weight, 122 one half pounds. His professional record, 25 victories, including 18 knockouts, 13 defeats with two draws. Originally from Dodoma, Tanzania, now living and fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the challenger, Rogers, the tiger, Tagawa. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. 
Wearing white, blue, and red, official weight, 126 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 16 fights. 16 victories, including 14 knockouts. Originally from Guantanamo, Cuba, now fighting and training out of Miami, Florida, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA featherweight champion of the world, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Yuri Orki. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions both in Spanish and English. Entienden las reglas. Todo bien? Protect yourself at all times, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself. Touch gloves. God bless you both. Tonight is supposed to set up a big little fight between Gamboa and Juan Now, Manuel Lopez, who you will see later tonight. Ready? Will Gamboa Tommy. come out of this fight okay, with a more impressive win against Mtagua than Give Lopez did? Or can Mtagua? upset the apple cart by weathering the early storm that is sure to come from Gamboa. TV all set to go. Ready? Scheduled for 12. And we are underway. Tagua throws out the first punch. Jab that's blocked by Gamboa. Hand speed obviously the edge to Gamboa. Tagua says one of the things that hurt him early, good left hand by Gamboa in his fight Here's against Lopez, point, that he had hurt his ankle two weeks before the fight. He says he's gotten in good work and gotten his run in every day. Feels he'll get stronger as the fight goes on. Gamboa countered. If he thinks he'll get stronger, it's a mistake. I'll break him down. I don't think it's going to be a long fight. We'll see. Lennox, we're about a minute into the first round. Both guys seem pretty relaxed. Seem pretty relaxed. Gamboa is caught in talk with a lot of punches oh, and hand. actually hurt him with that punch. Right and then the left hurt Mtagwa. Suffered two knockout losses in, in his career back in 06 and 04. Gamboa has been on the canvas, although he's undefeated. Four times he's been down. Gamboa is you know at the upper limit of athleticism you can see in terms of the speed and the punching power and the reflexes he's in his physical prime he also has an incredible amateur pedigree um, but so far in his career the hole has been somewhat less than the sum of its parts here we see him in his last several fights fighting more discipline than he normally does and trying to fight as you mentioned lennox at the top of the show in a more professional style the thing what I noticed is a, a speed difference and a reflex difference in Gamboa. Gamboa is just catching him with certain punches where he can't, he can't even see it. And Togba is trying to catch him, but, you know, it's difficult to catch what you can't, can't find. And he can't find Gamboa right now. Lennox, that counter left hand from Gamboa is one of the punches that Togba just doesn't seem to be able to handle. There's a good left to the body by Gamboa. See the power punch has landed so far in the round according to the copy box. 12-3 in favor of Gamboa. Pretty definitive round for Yorkus Gamboa. And down goes Mkagwa. Putting an exclamation Five, point on it. Six. And it's interesting. Seven, Every time Mtagwa tries to mount a punch, he gets hit because he's not seeing the punch coming. The punch is coming at a great speed and velocity. Big first round for Yorkus Gamboa. I feel. Okay. Hey, give me, give me Hey, what a bucket, what a bucket, what a bucket. What a bucket, what a spin bucket. Don't panic, Bobby. Relax. I got it, I got it, Joe. 
Eh, que él viene con el doble jab. Y no puede quedar para atrás. He's got to lateral. go off to the side. Con esa mano now, que tú estás with that hand, with that hand that you're working, ahora, just like you started now, you're not going to have any problems at all. Ya se cayó. He's down. And here we're going to see a, a left hand high to the head. Left hook, boom. By Gamboa. And the left hand was a money punch for him, Lennox, all yeah. around. Here's, here's another look. Is he more off balance than necessarily hurt there? He was a little bit off balance, but that was a good punch. According to the CompuBox numbers, Gamboa landed 14 of 29 power shots of his 15 connects. So if you're in the corner of Mtagwa, what do you do to stop the left hands and then the right from Gambo as he steps in? Left oh. hand right to the face by Gamboa. Combination to the head. Chops the right hand. Break, 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 and Mtagwa break, break, ties him up. Mtagwa's style is made for Gamboa because he's right there to be hit. The only question in this fight is can Mtagwa survive these moments early because he does really come on strong as the fight wears on. This well, fight may not be able to wear on if it continues to go like this. I know, different styles, different fights. This man, he hasn't even hit yet. And he's, and he's getting caught some powerful punches, some good hooks. Just a minute, 10 seconds into the round, Gamboa's landed 17 of 24 power shots, according to CompuBox. Combination tattoos Mtagwa again. Mtagwa drops his hands after he throws a punch, and that's very dangerous for a man like this. Oh, like, left, this right. This is what I'm telling you. Hurt him. He threw a combination, and his hands are down. And he's definitely hurt in this round. So whether he can weather the storm or not, this is a question. Good left hand to the body, right to the chin. Down goes Mtagwa. This is when Gamboa Six, really took his time seven, and he placed eight. his punches. One more time, come on now. And that's the result of it. Plenty of time in round two. Gamboa's too sharp right now. Target practice for the Cyclone of Guantanamo. Tagua wings one right, walks into another left again. He's right. not seeing that left. And he did not react well to that left hook. He blinked and looked like he was in, like really hurt by the shot. Tagua needs to hold on now. He's at a great stop. disadvantage right Good now. Stoppage. Good stoppage. Good no stoppage by more. referee no Steve Slover. No more, baby. No more. All right. And a sensational performance from Gamboa. Too sharp, too quick. Too powerful. Third time Mtagwa has been stopped in his career. This is a situation where he was totally outclassed. Just never had an answer for that left hand. It was too fast. Gamboa closed the show, hitting 38 of 58 power shots, 66%. But the speed, Lennox, the accuracy, sitting down on his punches, an even more polished looking Yoriorkis Gamboa. So Gamboa gets win number 17. Here's the first knockdown in round number two. Lennox left hand to the body and then a left right to the chin and a right cross. That, that shows how fast he hit him with five punches and Motagua had his hand left hand out. Here's another look at it. One. It's fast in slow motion. Five punches, five punch combination. Unbelievable. And it was target practice for Gamboa. And here's a look at the stoppage. And he was hurt. You know, not only going down, but he had taken a left hand before that. And Gamboa was just able to tee off and pick him apart. 
And Steve Smoger did the right thing to step in and stop it as Yoriarkis Gamboa gets win number 17 and stoppage number 15. The official time of the stoppage, we send it once again up to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes and 35 seconds of round number 2. The winner by knockout victory, still undefeated, the fighting pride of Guantanamo, Cuba, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Yorkes Gambo. Pretty awesome performance by Gamboa at 235 of round number two. He put Amtagua on the canvas three times in the fight, once late in round number one and twice in round number two. As we take a look at the final punch numbers and you'll see the total punches. Gamboa at 50%, Amtagua at 18%. I mean, Gamboa landed almost as many as Amtagua was able to even throw on the power punches were impressive 38 of 58 in the second round with the power punches for 66 percent he was at just under 50 percent in round number one so a total of 60 percent 52 of 87 it was the left it was the right it was easy for Yorkus Gamboa and he's standing by in the ring with Max Kellerman sensational performance your thoughts on that fight <laughs> Pensé darle uno más, unos rounds más y a partir del cuarto round apretar, pero... Sí. Well, you know, truthfully, I couldn't show all that I had, and I was hoping to get to the fourth round and then really show uh, what I came with, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't there. It seemed that tonight and in your last fight, you've been concentrating on fighting a more disciplined kind of fight. Can you talk about that? Bueno, realmente, como ya había dicho anteriormente, que estaban trabajando y más sale yo con respecto a todas estas cosas y eficiencia que hemos arrastrado de la mateo hasta profesional. As I said, I've been trying to improve all of these deficiencies and we've improved it and we've tried to erase them. After Juan Manuel Lopez's struggles with Mtagua, what statement did you make with that kind of a performance just now? Bueno, realmente eh, se está tratando de dos ahora diferentes, de dos categorías distintas. Two different boxers, two different categories, and you can't compare Juan Manuel Lopez and Yuri Gamboa. But we hope to be able to compare you both should Lopez win tonight in the not too distant future. What are your thoughts of fighting Lopez should he win tonight? Bueno, realmente eh, es una decisión que lo toman los promotores. Yo estoy preparado para cualquier boxeador que quiera enfrentarse conmigo. It's in the hands of the promoters, and I'm ready for whatever boxer is in front of me. Congratulations, and thank you. Bob. Impressive performance by Yuri Orkis Gambo. We're in the Mecca of Boxing, New York City, the theater at Madison Square Garden. Still to come, our main event, as Steven Luevino puts his featherweight championship on the line against Puerto Rican sensation Juan Manuel Lopez here at Madison Square Garden on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Well, speaking of Puerto Rican sensations, we are joined by the great Miguel Cotto here at Madison Square Garden. Miguel, first of all, on behalf of all of us at HBO, I'd like to extend my condolences to you and your family with the sudden passing of your father earlier this month. How are you and your family doing? Oh, we just tried to handle the situation. Thank you for the condolence, but everything's running, you know, not good, but we, we're doing the things to handle the situation. You've always been a big drawing card here at Madison Square Garden on June the 12th. Yuri Foreman, next up for you. Uh, what do you think about fighting here? What do you think about Foreman? No, uh, the, uh, fight, the fight is just in negotiation now. It's not concrete yet, but we, I'm available always for facing the big name in boxing. Um, it's, it's going to be J Yuri Foreman next June. I'm going to be ready for him. What about the energy that you get fighting here in New York City, especially the day after the Puerto Rican Day Parade? The day after the Puerto Rican Day Parade is great here because a lot of Puerto Ricans from Puerto Rico and from here in New York come to the Madison Square Garden and make me and bring me a lot of energy. All right, on March 13th in Arlington, Texas, it's Manny Pacquiao against Joshua Clotty. What's your thoughts of that fight? What's your prediction? No, they're going to be a, a, a tough fight, you know. Manny half his streak. Uh, Claudie has a lot of strength and good defense. They're going to be a great night for boxing. Who do you think is going to win? 
I don't know. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 best, the best prepared guy, the best shaped guy in this night going to be the winner. All right, and final question. Obviously, you've thrilled the fans here in New York many times in the big room here at Madison Square Garden. I want to get your impressions of Juan Manuel Lopez, a fellow Puerto Rican fighter, and him moving up to 126. And how do you see his development to this point? Puerto Rico always bring a lot of good boxers to boxing, you know. But Juanma is one of them. Juanma is one of the greatest boxers Puerto Rico made in the last 10 years. And we're here for, for support Juanma. And I, we hope, everybody will hope Juanma win this night. I got to tell you something. When I first started talking to you eight, nine years ago, you guaranteed us that your English was going to be great. Well done, my friend. Thank you. I work, I work in that. I have to work on my English. Thank you, Miguel. Best of luck. Thank you. Miguel Cotto joining us here at ringside at Madison Square Garden. We'll see him later this summer. Let's take a look at the HBO sports calendar. This Tuesday night, catch the premiere of our upcoming four-episode series, 24-7. Jimmy Johnson, race to Daytona, taking you behind the scenes with the NASCAR superstar as he and his crew prepare for the Daytona 500. On Thursday, it's the latest installment of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel featuring a report on the NFL's new approach to the issues of concussions and long-term health risks. On March 6, don't miss the premiere of Magic and Bird, A Courtship of Rivals, a documentary on the historic rivalry between Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Immediately following the Magic and Bird documentary, stay tuned for Boxing After Dark. Featuring a 140 pound unification fight between fellow belt holders Devin Alexander and Juan Urango. When the final bell is rung on our coverage of Alexander and Urango, stick around for Road to Dallas, Pacquiao versus Clotty. A 30 minute look ahead to the upcoming welterweight battle between superstar Manny Pacquiao and the always tough Joshua Clotty. One week later on March 13th, HBO Pay Per View brings you the live fight between Pacquiao and Clotty from Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com. We're at the theater at Madison Square Garden for HBO's Boxing After Dark, a featherweight doubleheader as we get set for our main event, Stephen Luevano taking on Juan Manuel Lopez. And we're joined here at ringside once again by Max Kellerman. All right, Max, we're getting set for the main event of the evening. Now, Juan Manuel Lopez is moving up from 122 to 126 pounds. He wants to win belts in a lot of different weight classes. Obviously, outside of winning this fight, what's his objective here? Right, well, first of all, this night is supposed to set up Juan Manuel Lopez and Yuriorkis Gamboa. So as you mentioned, he's in with a good fighter. He's got to win. But more than that, I think if you would have taken a poll of boxing insiders before Lopez fought Mtagua, and you would have asked them, of all the young up-and-coming fighters, who's most likely to one day be considered the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport? I think Lopez would have won that poll before the Mtagwa fight. I don't think he'd win that poll now. And so in the court of public opinion, he should not only win tonight, but do himself a favor and look good doing it, especially considering the way Gamboa just looked whipping the guy that Lopez struggled so mightily against last time out. Yes, M. Tagua is was just right for Gamboa, but people have a tendency to remember the performance in your last fight. And heading into the Gamboa fight, should he win tonight, this will be the performance that Lopez has in his last fight. Well, it's interesting. It's almost like in golf, putting up a score, and Gamboa's put up a 66, and now he's saying to Lopez, can you put up a 65 tonight? Lennox Lewis, the opponent tonight is Steven Luevano, but he's the belt holder in the featherweight division, taking on Lopez. He's a young man that has 37 wins. He's made five defenses of his belt, but he doesn't feel he gets the respect that he deserves. Does he necessarily have the temperament to command that respect? Well, you know, the thing about respect, you have to earn it. And the way how he's going to have to earn it, he has to be the top-ranked fighter. And this is his chance to do that. Uh, he wants that respect. He has to go out there and, and, and take it. Does he have that burning fire and desire? Well, this is a question I want to know tonight. Well, we're going to find out tonight in our main event here from the theater in New York City, Madison Square Garden. As we take a look at the tale of the tape, Stephen Luevano, 28 years of age. Juan Manuel Lopez, 26 years of age. Slight arm length advantage to Luevano. 
Weight 126 pounds, Lopez at 125 and a half. No issues for either fighter making the 126 pounds. Time for the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Stevie Luevino, one Manuel Lopez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of this one. He's in a boxing division. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The text of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the score cut if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Bob! Juan Manuel Lopez getting set to come into the ring. Lennox, he says that the moving up in weight, you know, he was struggling to make 122 pounds in his last three fights. He feels that now that he doesn't have to sweat out the weight, he's going to be even a better fighter. Uh, what are your thoughts on him moving up to 126? I think you have to go into the weight that you're comfortable in. It's, it doesn't make sense that you're struggling to make a weight and then you have to fight for 12 rounds because you're at a disadvantage. Now he's going into a fight, perfect weight, feels comfortable, he can eat what he wants, and this is what this is what you need. This is a mark of a champion. This is a mark for making you win a fight. 26 years of age from Puerto Rico. Obviously a strong following here in New York City for Juan Manuel Lopez, 27-0 with 24 knockouts. And Max, you know, when you take a look at a guy like Juan Manuel Lopez, this is a guy that caught the eye of everybody in the sport because of his dynamic ability. We're going to take a look at a montage of some different fights and the brilliance that Lopez brought to the ring. I think people were and still are so high on him because of all the young undefeated prospects in boxing with real athleticism, hand speed, and punching power. He seemed to have the best offensive technique and a solid, he was a solid, well-rounded fighter. He threw short, accurate combinations on the inside with real power, and then he's a southpaw to boot, making him even more awkward to fight. In his last fight, you know, you saw the brilliance that he had early in the fight and what he was able to do against a guy like Mtagwa. And I find his claim that he was drained by the weight to be credible because early on he was boxing very well, and as the fight wore on, clearly ran out of steam. But the upside was he had the chance to show what he was made of. He obviously has a lot of heart weathering that 12th round storm. And there is Steven Luebeno from La Puente, California. 37 wins, one loss, one draw, 15 knockouts. He's the belt holder, and he's a guy that kind of does it in a simple way, Lennox. He wants to use his jab and kind of make it an ordinary type of fight. Is that enough to deal with a guy like Lopez? Well, you know, you have to come into the ring with a lot more weapons than a right jab. I asked him about his, his, his hook, his uppercuts, and these are the things that he has to throw. He has to have a repertoire of different punches to throw against Lopez, because Lopez is no slouch. Well, Steven Luevino puts his belt on the line against Juan Manuel Lopez and what will be a very pro-Lopez crowd despite the fact that Luevino is the belt holder fighting here in New York City against the Puerto Rican Lopez here at the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York. We are set for tonight's main event for the formal introductions once again to the ring and Michael Buffer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin for our main event, at this time, it is my sad duty to memorialize one of the fraternity of boxing who has just recently passed away. He was a man who was humble and had great dignity. He dedicated most of his life to keeping young men off the streets and in the gym, and he molded many great fighters in Puerto Rico. At this time, would everyone please remain silent as we toll a memorial 10 count, for one of us is no longer here, Miguel Angel Cotto Sr. Rest in peace.
Ladies and gentlemen from the theater, Madison Square Garden, New York City, USA. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Character. The event, Pacquiao versus Clotty. Live from Cowboys Stadium, Dallas, Texas, on HBO Pay-Per-View, March 13th. And the Clinton Bush Haiti Fund. Starting tonight, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated will donate $1 from every ticket sold to every Top Rank event for the entire year of 2010. Do your part. Go to the ClintonBushHaitiFund.org or an official Haiti Relief Fund of your choice. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission Chairperson Melvina Lathan, WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring. Dan Ackerman, Julie Letterman, and John Stewart and inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Benji Estevez. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at Madison Square Garden, and the millions watching around the world on HBO Boxing After Dark, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, official weight, 125, one half pounds. A perfect professional record, 27 fights, 27 victories, including 24 knockouts. From Caguas, Puerto Rico, tonight, he's the challenger, and he's the current WBO junior featherweight champion of the world, the undefeated Juan Manuel. Juan Lopez. <laughs> and fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, official weight 126 pounds. An outstanding professional record consisting of 37 victories, including 15 knockouts, only one defeat with one draw. Fighting out of La Puente, California, presenting the reigning, defending, WBO featherweight champion of the world, Stephen Luevano. Let's go ahead and ring a little bit, Mike. One second. Stephen, one more. Recibiste tus instrucciones y me sigue las instrucciones. Nos damos cuenta. Obedece bien durante la pelea. Obey my commands at all times. Que gane el mejor. May the best man win. Touch him up. Good luck to both of you. It's going to be tough for Lopez to create the kind of water cooler buzz that Gamboa just did, especially after only a couple of months after a brutal fight with Antagua. But the whispers in boxing that Luevano might be an old 28. He wants the respect, the champion Luevano does. And Lennox, we talked about that early, about commanding that respect. He says, I want to be respected by the boxing world. Doesn't even have a nickname. <laughs> Everyone's got a nickname. But he's a talented guy. I mean, 250 rounds as a pro, just one loss, 37 wins, sixth defense of his belt here tonight. Trying to get that jab going. Yeah, I was going to say he's working that jab, and what he needs to do is double it up and and move a bit closer to him because right now the distance is a bit too far. So he needs to step in just a little bit when he's when he's throwing that jab. Alex, let me ask you something. It's something that Max talked about. 
with Gamboa looking so good and a potential fight between Lopez and Gamboa, put a little extra pressure on Lopez to try to look real good? It, it does. It does because of the fact that, you know, the guy that he had a hard time with in his last fight got knocked out quickly by a guy that he's supposed to be fighting soon. So I think to make it a really interesting uh, fight, he needs to get rid of this opponent. But this is a champion. This is a belt holder. No this is a guy over. with 37 wins and only one loss, so it is a little bit different. Well, but you know, right. also a southpaw, rangy, a really good fighter, at least a B-plus kind of fighter throughout his career. Um, and, and does not have the kind of style where it's as easy to look spectacular against. Lopez throws a left hand, backs up Luevano a bit. Counter shot there by Luevano. Lopez, that jab? Lopez needs to go out there and, you know, test Luevano and, and see what he's made out of. According to CompuBox, through the first two minutes of the round, Luevano has pumped out 32 jabs to Lopez's 13. Luevano seems very focused in there on his boxing. He wants to get that job working. Right now, both boxers are looking at headshots, and, uh, you know, there's different punches you can throw. You need to mix it up a bit, especially in the first round, to test your opponent. There's a right hand. That slapped to the head of Luevano from Lopez. All right, Bree. Watch your head, Steve. Watch your head. Let's go. Roll to the end of round number one, scheduled for 12. Ah. Juan Manuel Lopez <coughs> and Steven Luevano from the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York. Use your jab, use your jab, and don't throw it slowly. Pop it, fast, use that lead hand. That lead hand 80% of the time. With that lead hand, you hit him already. Keep doing it. And you block that shot, you block this straight shot. Come on. You gotta push your punches with speed, fast. Good. Where everything's good. Wind it up, mouthpiece in. Jab, jab, and liven it up. Liven it up, we're jabbing. We're doing good. We're connecting. This is Vaseline. Hey, take a look at the numbers in that round. Eight connects for Lopez, nine for Luevano. Luevano was busier, he threw 14 more punches, 52 to 38. But, you know, when you get in these close fights, Lennox and Max, those are those kind of rounds that, you know, would you give it to? Could be a factor in how you score. Those are the kind of rounds that tend to go to the guy with a big fight coming up, like Lopez. <laughs> Right hand from Lopez. Seems that Lopez's strategy is to initiate the action and then try to catch Luevano with something hard in an exchange. Well, he's, he's definitely stepping towards Luevano, and this is what he needs to do. Trying to find that way in. Luevano just short with that lead left. Luevano doesn't necessarily watch his opponents. Not a huge boxing fan. Didn't think that Lopez was overly skilled, at least from what was presented to him. He's worked on his skill, you know. You can tell that he's been working. He's pretty serious about what he does. His focus, his hands are up. You know, he's not making too many mistakes. His body's turned to the side. And, you know, he's focused on that jab. But like I said, you need to throw a lot more punches in your repertoire. You know, test that body, throw that right hook. Talking to Luevano yesterday, he didn't seem to have much interest, not only in boxing, but in most things. He seems to like to spend his time between fights playing video games and relaxing. Likes to hang with his three kids. Like that, nothing wrong with that. All he is is a fighter. He's just a good, educated fighter. And you can see it when he fights. He's not spectacular, but he has an educated right hand, and he knows what he's doing. 
His kids and his wife Marina are in town. Only his wife Marina is at the fight. Right hand from Luebino, and then he shoots a right hook to the body. His kids are back at the hotel. They were at a fight last year in 2008 against Mario Santiago. Luebino got knocked around in that draw, and he said, eh, maybe not a good idea for the young kids to be there in person. Really depends on the opponent in front of you. When Juan Ma fought De Leon, he was a, De Leon's a guy, wide punches, right there to be hit, and Lopez looked like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, Weveno is not the same kind of fighter, and if the idea of this fight is to set up the Gamboa fight, so far it looks like there may have been an underestimation in terms of how much Luevano has left. The big thing about Lopez right now, you know, stars make fight. Luevano seems to give him a little bit of problem just because of his lankiness and because of how tall he is. Nice combination by Lopez to end the round. Pretty good round for Luevano. This Tuesday night kicks off a four-episode run of the Emmy Award-winning series 24-7. Join us for an all-access look inside the lives of NASCAR superstar Jimmy Johnson and his crew as they prepare for the Daytona 500. On Thursday, catch the latest installment of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, an investigation into the collapse of the Dallas Cowboys practice facility, a disaster many experts insist should never have happened. It's a piece you do not want to miss, done by Frank DeFord. And there is Marina Luevano watching from ringside. Her husband, Stephen, at work. Round number three begins, scheduled for 12. Looks like Luevano may have been thinking that he let Lopez take the play away from him a little at the end of that round and wanted to come right out here and assert himself again here in the third. You think that could have been the tipping point in the round, Lennox? Just that last combination for Lopez? Because it was a pretty even round. Yeah, I mean, you know, Judges, when they when they see not too much too much action in a in a round, they usually give it to the person that usually ends off the round strong. Good left hand by Lopez caught the attention of Luevano. Luevano fires back with a left. That's Lopez's range. He wants to be mid range, firing his combinations. And obviously Luevano with the reach wants to keep Lopez the reach. And by the way, the, I think the slower hands wants to keep Lopez on the outside. Luevano a little short with that lead left. And tap Lopez to the body. You know, Luevano said he's a, he's a counter puncher. And this is what he's doing. He's, he's basically waiting for Lopez to throw a punch so he can counter punch. And uh, sometimes that's not good. You really have to start off the, the work yourself and uh, show that you, you know, that you want to win this fight, that you're in command of this fight. And that Lopez has to do whatever you you command him to do. Luevano got a couple good body shots in. In combination. Luevano hit Lopez right on the belt line. But he digs again to Lopez's body. Lopez tags it with a clean shot coming back. A short right hand there by Lopez. They're both hooked to the body. That's Lopez's strength, the short, accurate combinations. So Lopez is catching the Revano with a lot of different punches. He's catching him to the body. He's catching him with some uppercuts. He's catching him with some straight lefts. And he's being caught from time to time. Here too. Well, that's the thing. When you, when you go in there and you're ta taking risks, this is what happens. You take risks, but you still have to remember your defense because you're going to get hit taking risks. Lunging right hand from Lopez. Snap back the head of Nuevano. Straight left by Lopez. 
Oregano's trying to stick out his right hand and keep it back. This is where Lopez takes over the round. Hey, te tienes que cerrar bien cuando están pegados. You gotta close up, close up. Grab him when you're on the inside. You're doing good, you're doing good. We're not doing bad, we're working it. Listen, use your uppercut when you're close. Uppercut and hooks to the body and the uppercut. Use that lead hand 80% of the time, 80% more. When the fight is close at close range, you gotta lead with the uppercut and then the hook. Uppercut and hook and then the straight shot. And the family of Juan Manuel Lopez. Got the kids there, Stephanie, Raymond, Alexandra, Melissa. Boys, a bunch more. We're doing good. We're doing good. Let's go, champ. Now, Lopez had the edge in power shots, 19 to 46, to Luevano's 13 to 34. In round number three, let's check in with our unofficial ringside score, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, I've got a three to nothing. 30 to 27, Juan Manuel Lopez. Bob, I'll tell you something. A southpaw has his power in his left hand. If he doesn't, he's a converted right-hander. And in rounds one and two, Stevie Luevano was throwing that right jab all round, but he wasn't throwing his left hand. Juan Manuel Lopez at least throws a right hook once in a while, like he's throw right there. He throws the hard right jab, he stamps it, and he throws that left hand. And that's the power shot. That's the shot that's bloodied Luevano's nose, and in my estimation, did more damage in rounds one and two. Round three, I thought Lopez clearly won. Three to nothing, Juan Manuel Lopez. Well, um... Harold, it speaks to your point because right, Steven Luevano, when he started yeah, boxing, yeah, he went to the yeah, gym. He's a natural yeah, righty. He just got into a lefty stance. So his power hand is his lead hand, his right hand, and that would explain one of the reasons why he's not a big puncher with his left. We see that more and more in boxing, and I, I think it might be a good idea. 75% of the shots are thrown with a lead hand anyway. Might as well make that the stronger hand. Left hand from Lopez, right hand. Luevano tries to fire back. You know, when I was starting boxing, uh, you know, I wanted to be like Hagler. Hagler always switches left to right, left to right, until, you know, Adrian Tier Duresco, my Romanian trainer, Steve, Steve. said, listen, it's better to learn one way and perfect one way. Everyone, every kid who walks into the gym, you know, who's right-handed, leads with their right and then gets turned around by some trainer saying, you don't lead with your with your strong hand, but you see it more and more, it seems to be effective. Hey. And it makes sense. You know, people ask me, am I right-handed or left-handed? You know, I say I, I'm ambidextrous. And, and, and Lopez also, looks pretty ambidextrous in here too, Lennox. Yeah. Really, as you mentioned, he mixes up the punch as well. Yeah, and I also punch with both hands. <laughs> yeah, you do. Or you did. Right hook to the head by Lopez. Lennox, you just get the feel here with under a minute to go in round number four. The momentum is kind of swinging Lopez's way. Yeah, because Lopez is throwing a lot more punches. He's putting his punches together. This is what you need to do. You're going to need to throw combination punches. He's mixed in a little of that peekaboo defense, too. Then he launches up with a right hook to the head. Power punches, 19 to 6 in favor of Lopez in this round. 19 of 35, 54%. Luevano needs to show a little bit more fire on them, you know. Right now, it seems like he's going through the motion. Luevano just missed, and Lopez jumps on him. End of four. Right here. Relax, breathe. Breathe, we're doing good. Breathe, breathe, relax. We're doing good. Close up, close up. Avoid his punches and use the combinations. On the inside, uppercuts, you're doing good. Use the uppercuts. Come on, make yourself small. Make yourself small and get out of the corner. Turn, don't bring your heads up in there. Let's go, right? Okay. Come on, bastard. Come on, it's just a matter of time. He's emptying up. You got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to get out. 
Lopez landed 23 of 46 power shots in the round, 50%. As we begin round number five, Lennox, the Lueveno corner said, make yourself small. Explain to the fans how one makes himself small. Well, what, he's, what they're saying is, you know, when it becomes a close fight, you know, don't stand up. Don't give yourself a big target. Make, make yourself a smaller target so you don't get hit. Good stiff jab by Lopez. Left hand over the top by Lueveno. And Lueveno's doing the right thing, I think. Trying to load up and catch something. Catch Lopez with something really hard in an exchange. Because in most of those exchanges, when they're just moving their hands, Lueveno's at a disadvantage. He's not as compact. He's not as accurate a puncher. So he's trying to load up and catch Lopez with one particular shot. Nice combination and, and by Lopez. The, and that's the mistake. One particular shot is, you know, you're really wishing in the win. You need to throw a number of different shots to be able to try and catch Lopez. Sure, but when he does that, he seems to be outworked and outlanded on the inside. And it looks like he's trying to surprise Lopez with something. With a, with a different level of power behind it. See, Lopez is, in every, after every exchange, he's always first. He's always coming back first. He's not trying to think of a, being a counter puncher. Nuevo is, is waiting. You don't wait. You be first. Being first is very important, especially in the minds of the judges, because they're seeing that you're being first, starting off the combination, Good. and you're ending the combination. Good uppercut there by Lopez. Haven't seen that punch from him. It is Nuevo's strategy, his stated strategy, to take Lopez into the later rounds where he feels Lopez will become increasingly frustrated and, and will become laxer with his defense. Well, the last 11 fights for Luevito have averaged 11 rounds of fight. He's not a big puncher. And Luevito needs to be a little bit more on his toes. He's really flat-footed right now. And, you know, for a tall, lanky guy like that, he needs to be a little bit more on his toes. Lennox, if part of the strategy for Lueveno is trying to get Lopez into those later rounds, doesn't he need to be busier? I mean, he's been busier, but not appreciably busier than Lopez. Well, he, he needs to be busy. As you can see, he's changed his style a little bit more. He's, he's elected to uh, give Lopez a little bit more pressure and see if he can make something out of that. See, I, I, of course, you see the taller fighter, and we've been saying he should be fighting at his distance at a better range for him in Lueveno. But when what he was doing wasn't working, he's now adapted and he's trying something new at least. You know, I asked him if he had a, a, had a game plan. He said he does. I said, do you have an alternate, alternate one? He said he does. And this is the ultimate game plan. You mean a, a secondary one to go to if the first one's not working? Uh, exactly. Very good round, very good round. Now close up and use the uppercuts. Use the uppercuts, uppercuts and the hooks. Stevie, you did very good this round. But don't let him hit you. Don't let him hit you. You gotta be intelligent. You caught him this round. You caught him this round and you're working it. But don't be overconfident. Don't be overconfident, okay? Well, drink some water. Intelligent, Intelligently, lively. Don't come out with your head up. Don't come out, don't pull out with your head up. Just like you did in the, in the previous round. Come on, move around. We're dominating it. We're dominating it. But don't move back. Lennox. Luevino threw one more punch. Lopez landed 27 to 17. But there, I thought there was an interesting point there because it seems as if Lopez gets a little sloppy with his technique when he's inside and he's doing good work. He does kind of come back out straight, right. and you're wondering if Lueveno can tag him when he gets sloppy with technique. All right, guys, come on. You know, this is what he's supposed to do is a counter puncher, so he needs to take advantage of these situations that, that arise. Lueveno's left eye is starting to really swell. Well, when you're a champion, it's important to show the judges, yes, this is my ring, this is my belt, and I'm the champion in here. Some of the reason for that left eye swelling is Lopez has been very successful with his right hook. That time Lueveno got the left hand up and blocked it, but Lopez goes back to it and doubles it up. 
And it goes again. I agree. Nice and clean, nice and clean. But well, Luevano certainly does not look like a shot fighter. The idea was after his last fight against Concepcion, he was getting hit more cleanly than he normally does, and he's had some tough fights, and maybe he was an old 28, but he's not fighting like an old 28. That fight he won on disqualification in what was a close fight. It was 67-66 for Luevano on two of the cards. Concepcion hit him clearly after the bell, and Jay Nady issued the DQ right away. On the uh, flip side here, we talked about the Gamboa performance earlier. And, you know, maybe a little added pressure on Lopez. Lopez seems to be staying within himself right now. He's within himself. He's, he's quite comfortable. This is the type of fight he likes where he can get inside and, you know, throw his combinations. He's mixing it up very well. He's throwing some body shots and then coming back with that uppercut. And it's, you know, it's an effective punch for him. One of the questions out of, out of the Tagua fight for Lopez was, did he suffer that semen stamina problem late in the fight? Did he get tired because of the weight? It looks like we may find out here because Luevano is making him fight hard, and we're getting into the middle rounds. Well, he said he sparred 136 rounds for this fight. And now at featherweight, he has the, he's 126, not 122. Weight should not be an issue said in the previous fights he was only able to go about 100 rounds and he would just wear down trying to make that weight. The end of round six signifies the midway point of the bout. They see Lopez at 36%. Lopez has done a good job with the power punches. 40% as we take you inside punch zone and see where the Webino is getting hit. You see all the shots to the head. Lopez has done a good job there. And you see that the reason why they're swelling under the left eye, that's been the favorite spot of Lopez. He has hit Luevano 37 times under that left eye and around that left eye. Oh. Round number seven underway for Juan Manuel Lopez and Steven Luevano. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. 59, 55, five rounds to one, one Manuel Lopez. Bob, I think that, uh, well, round five, Stevie Luevo, though, had just outfought one Manuel Lopez. Had a real good round, but other than that, it's still one Manuel Lopez landed a power shot. He lands right hooks, he lands oh, left hooks. Look, oh. look at that right hook. I mean, he's staggered him with that right hook. That's why he's winning this fight. And down goes Luevo. I think he's going to be able to recover from this. And Benji Estevez stops it. Maybe not as spectacular as Gamboa, but considering what was in front of him, Juanma may have had the better win tonight. You know, stars make fights, and, you know, they both have ter terrific performances. And, uh, you know, this is the way you want to fight to end. You, you want to go in there, work, and obviously this is the way the script that you want to play for yourself to end out. You want to become victorious after your fight. Well, I talked about earlier, Gamboa threw his score up. Lopez said, here are my burdens. Well, he was playing a much tougher course. May have not shot the same, but it was a much tougher course. Only the second loss in Luevano's career. First time he's been stopped. And in his sixth title defense, Luevano loses his belt to that man. Juan Manuel Lopez, 
finding it featherweight after moving up from 122. Pretty spectacular at 126. Lennox, let's take a look at the end of the fight and how Lopez finally finished him off. Well, you know, Lopez really broke him down with a number of different punches. And, you know, it all starts with that uppercut. And there you see it. And he wasn't, whoever I wasn't re able to come back after that uppercut because he was hurt. Yeah, we saw him use the uppercut two rounds ago. Hadn't used the punch a lot. We're going to take another look at it, but it's perfectly placed. Well, it was a good punch. Um, you know, like I said, he wasn't able to recover from that. Most boxers could recover from that, you know, because they have that toughness. But, you know, he got caught with a couple extra punches there, and that really put the icing on the cake. Yeah, the uppercut hurt him, then the right hook, and then the left cross. And Luevino was done, and Juanma gets win number 28. Stoppage number 25, and it takes care of business in round number seven. You know, Lopez really put a good repertoire of punches together. And, you know, you can't be a counter puncher in there. You have to go out there and try and knock out the guy. Not say to yourself, well, I want to go out there and box him because the other guy's trying to knock you out. And you don't get paid for overtime. Let's get the official time of the stoppage once again to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to an end at 44 seconds of round number seven. The winner by TKO victory, now a two-time world champion and new WBO featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Juan Lopez. Great sportsmanship there by Luevino. He went and he pointed right to Juan Manuel Lopez's chest like this was the better man tonight. And Juan Ma takes his 126 pound belt. Let's take a look at the punch stats and as this fight wore on Lopez got busier and more accurate. He lands at 36 percent. Luevino threw 11 more punches but 40 more connects for Juan Manuel Lopez. And the power punches especially those right hooks to the head. 115 of 280, 41 percent. And Lopez puts on a show. 44 seconds of round number seven when it stopped. And Max Kellerman is in the ring with Juan Manuel Lopez. Congratulations, Juan Ma. Great performance. You seemed especially emotional at the end of that fight. Why? Es mi sueño ser campeón del mundo en cuatro divisiones. Ya tengo la segunda. It's my dream to be four, champion in four divisions. This is the second one, and I'm very, very happy to have showed the crowd a great fight. Where does that fight rank in terms of the tough fights in your career? No, no, es una fue una pelea difícil porque es un pelea muy inteligente, pero tal vez no la más fuerte, pero es un poco incómoda. It's a tough fight because he is an intelligent fighter, and it's not one of the toughest, but it's it's a little bit uncomfortable because he is difficult. He has a difficult style, and you had a tough act to follow after Gamboa blew out Mtagua. But you followed it well. Was that on your mind at all? Yes, no, no, no. I was prepared for this fight. It doesn't matter what Gamboa has done with Matagua. Gamboa is a great fighter, but Matagua was 22 and he was 26. You know, I prepped for this fight. It doesn't matter what he did against Matagua, but Matagua weighed at 122 and the fight was 126. And what happened with Matagua today, it's not going to happen with me because it's two different styles. It wouldn't happen. So you knock out a guy who's tough to beat, tough to knock out. Do you think you're going to win a fight? The guy who's tough to beat, tough to knock out. And coming up, you might have a big little fight at 126 pounds against Gamboa. Your thoughts? Bueno, eso nos sentaremos estos días a conversarlo. Si es el próximo Gamboa, bien, eso se cargará mi equipo de trabajo. Pero lo mismo Gamboa, Israel Vázquez, Rafael Marquez, yo quiero los grandes nombres, lo que yo quiero. Well, we'll sit and we'll discuss it in the next few days. But if it's Gamboa, whatever my team wants, if it's Israel Vázquez, Marquez, whatever, it doesn't matter. Congratulations, excellent performance. Muchas gracias y a toda mi gente de Puerto Rico mañana a 5 y 30 en el aeropuerto de Isla Grande. Los quiero mucho. Tomorrow 5.30, Isla Grande. He's waiting for you there. Bob. All right, thank you very much, Max. A great performance by Juan Manuel Lopez stopping Steven Luevano.
in round number seven at 44 seconds. Lennox Lewis, your thoughts on what you saw out of Juan Ma after that tough performance against M. Togwa at 122. He goes up to 126, and he really did a wonderful job of breaking down his man. He did. He stepped towards him. He threw some great combinations. And, you know, eventually something had to break, and it did break tonight. All right, you saw the speed earlier tonight of Yoriorkis Gamboa as he easily handled Rogers M. Togwa. What's your early thoughts about a Gamboa Lopez showdown? Good fight. Really good fight. I think, you know, two different styles, and I would love to see them together. And uh, like I said, Gamboa, just uh, unbelievable speed, movement, and you could say he's really come together, found himself as a professional as it's shown today. Oh, it was a lot of fun watching these two talented young fighters go to work and take care of business. Max Kellerman, obviously, uh, Lopez, after the final two rounds against M. Tagua, kind of erases that. Gamboa, as Lennox pointed out, was spectacular. You know, your thoughts on what you saw out of Lopez in the evening overall? Well, you know, intellectually, it's easy to understand that what Lopez had in front of him was much more difficult to look spectacular against. And it's also easily to, it's easy to get your mind around rationally the idea that in many ways Lopez had a better win here because after all, Gamboa was fighting until a guy who until recently against Lopez who was struggling to make weight was a club fighter. You know, rationally those things are easy to understand. But emotionally, it's much more difficult to get around the thing you just saw Gamboa do. Gamboa created the kind of emotional impression on viewers tonight, I think, certainly on me, that's going to be hard to rationalize away with all those kind of rational thoughts. And um, that's what's special about Gamboa. He creates that kind of immediate emotional response in viewers. I thought he created it here tonight and was the guy who, uh, heading into the Lopez fight, I think is likely to be favored by uh, most who saw this. Max, all I could say is looking forward for the main event between those two, Lopez Sorry. and Gambo. Well, that wraps it up from here at ringside. Boxing returns here on HBO with Boxing After Dark on March the 6th. We were scheduled to have a world championship fight for you next week between Shane Mosley and Andre Berto. But because of the earthquake in Haiti, Berto had to pull out of the fight after losing several members of his family. On behalf of all of us here at HBO, we'd like to extend our condolences to Andre Berto and his family. And our support goes to all those affected by the earthquake in Haiti. Well, this Tuesday night here on HBO, you do not want to miss the premiere of a four-episode run of the Emmy Award-winning series 24-7. This time around, though, we'll...